In this video, we are going to discuss the delivery of a cervical headgear for your patient with the force axis correction and the neck strap and so forth. In a previous video, we discussed fitting the inner bow onto the patient and we went into great detail about how to make it fit easily and smoothly into the tubes for uh, ease of insertion and so the patient wouldn't dislodge the bands. Today, the object is to make the force of the headgear go right through the center of resistance of that molar, which happens to be right about where my thumbnail is, or the frication of the upper molar right there. And if we look carefully, you will see that the frication is approximately 10 millimeters higher than the tube. 10 millimeters higher than the tube. Let me make that a little bit better. And we'll get that in a better focus. There. And so the frication is about 10 millimeters from that tube. In addition, notice that the tube width is approximately 4 millimeters. So halfway back would be 2. So 2 in and 10 up would be where the frication is. Notice when we insert the face bow, that would be the same as the distal of that U-loop, the distal of the U-loop would be 2 back and 10 up would represent the frication of that molar. So to transfer this information, to transfer this information to the patient's face, you can use any straight edge. I have a metal one here. And I'm going to put the metal straight edge on the distal aspect of the U-loops just like that. Then take the handy sharpie and we will make a mark on the outer bow of the face bow. This represents the mesial of the headgear tube, which will be transferred, which will be transferred to the patient's face once the face bow is inserted. Then, having said that, the armamentaria for the delivery will be the adjusted, marked face bow, the heavy duty face bow plier, handy plastic ruler. We just used any straight edge. This can be a piece of paper, can be a chart, can be anything. Sharpie, of course, the math out plier. Math out plier is nice, is a nice thing to insert the force module, the force module onto the neck strap. These items are, of course, purchased from Progressive Dental Supply. We went over discuss. I mean, we did discuss previously the force module and when to use what on the patient. For my current students and G6 current graduates, you can find all this information in Session 4, Case 979. For my previous graduates, you can find all this information in Seminar 5 of your title slide notes. So having said all that, we have our armamentaria ready to go. Let's meet our patient. And our patient for today is Styro. And Styro is approximately nine years old. And Mrs. Palm gave birth to Styro nine years ago, her pride and joy. But it's really sad. He always wears his favorite hat, of course. We'll get rid of the hat for a minute because he has alopecia universalis. And, as I said, we have previously fitted the face bow onto the molar tubes. So let me insert that. And remember, the insertion is going to be gently compress, gently compress this, fit one side first and then the other side so it goes into the tubes as smooth as glass. And when it's in here, notice that it exits the commissure of the lips right between the two. It doesn't hold his lip up or down. And the face bow is adjacent to but not touching the skin anywhere. Next, we need to get the neck strap ready for him. So we'll take the neck strap out of the package. To expedite this, I've already inserted one side on here and I like to put the flat side of the force module down toward the strap and you can see there's various places the, the force module could go. could go on the end or here or here depending on the size of the patient. So since Styro is a pretty average size patient, we'll get the force module out, the second one, and then here is where I generally need to use the Mathal plier. 
to help me get the strap on there, so let me do that. And I will get that cloth to go inside of that. And sometimes there's some flash on the plastic from the injection molding that makes that difficult to get that in there. But once you get that in, you can see that works pretty easily. And again, the flat side goes against the strap. This force module that we're using today happens to be a light. You can see the arrow pointing toward the light side. And I'm going to move Styro here for just a moment and put the neck strap on, so bear with me. If this were done clinically, you would ask the patient to lift up their hair if it's a girl so that you can get the neck strap on there comfortably. I pull both sides out all the way and then I hook up both sides at the same time otherwise the neck strap is likely to come excuse me the face bow is likely to come out of the patient's face and be uncomfortable so again he wiggles his head around a little bit get the neck strap all organized that looks good next what we're going to do is transfer that point on the outer bow of the face bow onto the patient's cheek. So I can see that mark right here. So I will transfer that. I will transfer that to the patient. And then the mark on the cheek, transfer that to the patient right there. And remember what you're trying to do now is you're going to go 10 up and two back from that point. So you're trying to go 10 up and 2 back. So let me mark that with my plastic ruler. So from the dot, I'm going to go 10 up and then I'm going to go 2 back. So that's the frication, that's the width of the tube. So patient right side is done. Now we're going to do patient left side. Patient left side. And we go, oops. And we go 10 up. And then two back. And of course, this is not precise because the cheek moves and all that. And now the object of the game is to put the string line, which is why you have the handy plastic ruler, has to go through that dot. And almost without exception, the outer bow has to be bent up to make that string line go through that dot. So let me bend this side up. Let me bend this side up. And I like to bend it right here, right about where the radius turns into the straight wire. And you bend this up. And you can see the bend right here is up. And the string line should head right toward, right toward that dot. And uh, that's looking like a little bit too high. So I'll turn that back over and bend that down a little bit. And then the string line goes through the dot and that looks very good. Remember it's the there's the 10 up and that's the two back. So patient Left side is done. Now we're going to do patient right side. String line, not the metal of the face bow, but the string line has to go through the dot. So this has to go up. Put the plier right here. Bend this up. That looks a little bit too much. Bend it back down. Hey, hey, looks perfect. So, this is all adjusted, and as I said, 99% of the time, the outer bow has to be bent up to accomplish this. Rub the stuff off the patient's cheek. Make sure that he or his mom or somebody can insert and remove the face bow. Deliver the neck strap, and he's to wear this 10 to 14 hours a day for as long as the appliance diagnosis tell I'm sorry the uh, treatment plan diagnosis tells you to use the headgear usually it's until class 1 molar and that would be orthodontic class 1 molar and remember doctors unless you set up the environment to distalize a headgear works by growth restraint in a young patient not distalization 
Distalization only occurs if you have extracted a 7 or if the environment is correct for distalization to occur because most POS students think that headgear causes or affects distalization but in reality most of it is from growth restraint that's why we use it in a growing patient styro remember is nine years old we have three years to work on this we could correct six plus millimeters of class two if he was a very very good headgear wearer so I hope you find that informative and do not be scared of your first headgear delivery it's very very simple and even if you totally mess up the whole thing you can always recheck it next month because headgear works very very slowly because it's just growth making the correction it is not distalization in the majority of cases all right i hope that's been helpful and until we talk again